Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. You guys asked for it, we're gonna look at the naked electric guitar shipping system today. My other video of these guys, feel free to check that out, that was for electric guitars in a case. This time we're gonna see how this one holds up shipping a guitar without a gig bag, without a case, or anything like that. So let's go ahead and dive into our shipping system here. No custom artwork this time, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> they got to the back. So let's open this up here. Oh, wow. So this time, did they send me more boxes? We'll have to find out. This almost looks like more than just a three pack. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess with the naked system, you're gonna need some additional protection. So it looks like our cardboard to protect the guitar is actually going to be way larger this time. So that's one protective, two, and three. All right. So quite a bit comes in this little three pack here. All right. So it looks like these are for the top of the guitar and these might be for the bottom or something like that. We'll, we'll figure this out together. And then I think these other three boxes will be the actual boxes themselves. I was wondering why the naked kit cost $10 more. I think now we know why. You, you get almost like twice as much stuff. And then in here, it looks like we've got our shipping supplies. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I got a pump this time either. <laughs> <laughs> they said they were gonna send one, but they probably forgot. That's okay. That little ball pump works okay, too. So what differs this time is we have a guitar vest. This is supposed to like, you know, just go around the whole guitar and protect it. And now we have these cool little fabric bags. Now these are actually a, a pretty okay deal. You can get them on Stu Max website for $1 a piece, which Honestly, if you're shipping a naked guitar and you want to avoid getting a scratch on it, I think that's a really good deal just on themselves. I didn't really know where to buy these previously, so that's one place. But let's go ahead and pump one of these guys up. So you can see there's some problem areas right here. Just make sure it's stretched out good and then you should be able to get it. Okay, so let's just visually inspect all of these. Yep, I'd say I got them all. That took about three minutes, I would say, with uh, this dial of pump anyways. So this is supposed to just go right over on top of the guitar. So just like a vest. Oh, okay. So this is kind of cool. Last time, remember, we used these as like the top bits, and that's what secured it in the box this way. This time, these are actually being used as the top and bottom protection. That's kind of an ingenious little design because it's going to accept pretty much any body style. I mean, this is a Stratocaster style guitar. This one's made by Dan Electro. It's from my Trade Tuesday series. But it seems like it's going to even have enough room for maybe even slightly pointier guitars. I mean, maybe not some crazily shaped guitars, but I think if you're just dealing in basic normal stuff, you'll be okay. So you can see how much padding you have on both sides. I mean, Keep in mind, some of that's kind of dead airspace. But, I mean, it looks pretty well protected, especially at the bottom. Look at that. I could just bounce this guitar all day long. <laughs> Let's ring it, see if it's actually experiencing any G-force trauma. Man, that, that feels pretty good. <laughs> All right, now let's figure out the rest of this shipping system. This is usually the part in my video where I fail, and yeah, I forgot the fabric bag. <laughs> but th this does go to show you, I mean, you don't necessarily have to do the fabric bag, but I think it makes it look a little bit fancier, so let's go ahead and uh, put this on. I think what I'll do with the uh, tremolo bar is I'll just wrap it up in some additional bubble wrap. 
and then just tape it right there to now take a look at it in its cheesecloth inside of that box this is I wasn't really sure what to expect with this one, but so far I'm really impressed. So I think all we have to do is figure out the uh, the box system now. All right, so we'll open one of these boxes. It's a pretty standard box, but just in case you've never got a brand new box before, you just gotta fold them out like this. Sometimes you gotta work them a little bit. them down. Alright, so we will place our guitar inside the box. Now just by itself, I mean you can tell it moves around quite a bit. That's what the additional packing material for is right here. So last time we learned that these just kind of fold up like this. And they secure the guitar in the center as well as, you know, provide an extra area of support for the box where it was creased to save on shipping costs. And you can see this time it sits right on top of where that bubble wrap vest ends. So now you've got all of this dead space. And this is why you want to put that cheesecloth bag over top of it or else the guitar might get scratched by this. I think it might be a good idea if they did like a little cutout right there. That way this would just completely form over top of the guitar. I think that's something you could probably do after the fact to custom fit it to the guitar. And now we've got this thing to figure out. All right, so this thing was a little bit confusing to me. So what it makes it look like you wanna do is you want it to be like this in like a V pattern. And then it just kind of like folds up in your box. So this is the best that I could figure out what they wanted you to do. Ways. So it kind of, adds an outer layer to the box, almost making it kind of like a double wall thing. And you've got this to protect the guitar from moving up and down. So it's gonna be trapped within the center of the box to protect it from damage. So let's go ahead and give it a shake test. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I... I would say that works, guys. I mean, it, there's not a lot to this one, but I think this one works better than even with a case. So all said and done, this is what it looks like. Now the fragile tape doesn't come with it. That's just something I do. Honestly, it doesn't do much of anything besides make it look fancy for the customer. But the dimensions are 46 inches by 19 by 7, and it weighed 12 pounds, 4 ounces with the guitar with all the packaging materials. For the next part of this video, I'm going to switch over to my computer and we're going to do some comparison shopping here just to show you guys the true cost of shipping. Had Stu Mac not have sent me a different box, I probably would have used this Taylor branded box. And its dimensions are 45, 19, 8. And I bet this packed up with my normal packaging materials would have been about 16 pounds. So we'll use this in our case studies as well. So before we talk about the pricing of the boxes, let's see how much it actually costs to ship one of these. Now I'm going from Ohio to California, so that is like the most extreme case of what my shipping costs would ever be. And we're buying our label through Reverb and they give really good discounts. So our box was 46 by 19 by 7 with a total weight of 12 pounds 4 ounces. But UPS always just rounds that up to the nearest pound so we're at 13. The insurance for this will be 9 bucks. Then we've got the signature required. So with all that in there the total cost is $45.99. But let's say I was going to do it in that Taylor box. Now it's actually one shorter in this dimension, the same in this one, but the only difference between that box and this other one is it's one inch longer in the height. The other thing is my regular packing materials would weigh more than the Stu Max, so I'm estimating about 16 pounds. So what is the difference in cost just for one inch in the height? We're at 47.53, which might not sound like a lot, but that's $1.50 extra. Now I happen to ship a lot of guitars and let me tell you that Taylor box is still relatively small. The average that I found is about a 48 inch length, you've got a 15 inch width and a 12 inch height. That's like the standard guitar box. Now sometimes it'll be 50 length, like a 17 width and then a smaller height, but it all averages out to be about the same and we'll use the same 16 pounds. This is what I would consider the average shipping cost to California. 
So that's 5323. So just by using a different box, that potentially saves me about $7 or more. Because remember, these are reverbs discounted rates. Normally, this would be $112.41 versus $90 if you were buying it on UPS's website. So if you're just an average Joe shipping through UPS's website, you're going to save $30 right there. And that more than pays for the materials. So now let's actually talk about the cost of all this. So they have four different systems, one with electric guitars in cases and out of cases and acoustic guitars in cases and out of cases. Now the cost that you're seeing here on the screen for them, that's for a complete three pack. I got that wrong in my last video. What threw me off was they listed these separately, but that's just if you wanted to purchase them by themselves. The three pack comes with them. So they offered them in three packs and six packs, but they also have a 10 pack of the boxes for each of these. So you could buy a 10 pack and then all these additional supplies. And I already went out and did all the math. So for an electric guitar with a case, if you just purchase the base set, and if you paid for the Stu Max membership that gets you free shipping, it comes out to $30 a box. However, if you do the six pack, it goes down to $21 per box. And if you go as far as buying a 10 pack and then all the individual things that you would also need, it cuts that cost all the way down to $17.50 per box. So whether buying these is worth it or not comes down to how comfortable you are with shipping a guitar and how often you ship something. I think as a business, this almost seems like a no brainer. Almost. My only problem is when I started checking out with Stu Max is they actually started charging me a $10 handling fee on top of all that. So that kind of messed with my numbers, but it is one of those few items that gets assessed that heavy fee. I mean, this is a very convenient thing that I'm glad is available, but it's something you have to decide for yourself whether it's worth it or not for you. The naked shipping system definitely seemed better to me than the electric guitar one. I felt that one just needed a little bit of additional padding to, to make it a perfect fit, but I can definitely sign these off as very good shipping systems. But what good is this if we don't actually do a test? Tune into tomorrow's episode to find out.